Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to look at the different views, the different type of hardware views that we have in TIA Portal. Uh, I right now have the problem as I progress in making videos, I get more and more um, components, hardware components here into my uh, TIA Portal project. And you see I have one, two, three, four, five, six PLCs and two HMIs and it's getting more and more and more and more. And if I go to devices and networks, you will see it looks a little bit crowded now. There's many components. Um, what is that? And why do I have network view? I have topology view and I also have device view. What, what, why? I don't know. <clears throat> Let's check it out. So whenever you add a new device, right? You add a new device, you go to controllers, for example. Let's add a 1200, does not really matter. I'm adding a 1200. And you see on the bottom left, it already says open device view. So I will just add this PLC to my project open device view and you will see the device view for this one PLC or whatever component we have uh, is opened. You see device view is active and we see this specific PLC that I added, the 1200 here. Right? If I go back to the network view, I can just double click on any other component, for example, the PLC here, and will get me back to the device view of this one PLC where I can parameterize and I can change this, uh, this HMI, not PLC, this HMI here. If I want to go to another one, back to network view, I'm cl double clicking on another one here, I'm getting back here. If you don't want to double click on the top left, actually you have a list of all devices that you can choose. Right? I want to go to the CPU, hey, I go to the CPU. Hey, I want to go to this HMI, I go to this HMI. Now I can just go in here and change all the parameters down here for this one device, right? Or the PLC. I can go back to my PLC that I had. Here we go. And I can also change everything with this one PLC, right? This is the device view. In device view, you can also add more components to the one device that you have actually selected. That's why we have device view. Um, two hints here. You have one button here, modules not plugged in on top. If you open this, you will see modules that you have not plugged in. This is very good if you are planning your PLC and you don't know what you're using uh, in the end, or maybe you already have all the components and you don't know in which order you want to put them in yet. You can just grab components for later use and they are sitting up here. You can already parameterize them. And later on, you can add them. This device doesn't support those. It wasn't a good choice to have those. But yeah, and you can also uh, delete them one at a time. Let's maybe take this PLC. I open the modules that are not plugged in. I add one for later use. I can parameterize it. I can uh, do stuff with it. And then later on, I can just drag and drop. Hey, and it's now connected to the PLC. That's the first thing. The second thing is this button here. <laughs> Change over orientation of the division. I do not like how it is pre-adjusted because you have down here, um, the standard setting is actually like this, that it's here on the right side, as far as I know. That this list here is on the right side. You have for, uh, in this list, you see it's a list. So it's actually going horizontally, right? So if you click on the button, uh, change orientation, you have it on the bottom. And now I can change some parameters like IO addresses and I can select my single module. It's just down there, which I deem more uh, convenient. At the last <clears throat> thing on the device view, if I zoom out, you see there used to be names. If I zoom in, you see now there are tags, there's a list, there's names, and I can actually take drag and drop those into my program. Um, if you are zoomed in to more than 200%, you see it on the bottom here, I'm right now at 200%. If it's less, you can't see them. If it's more or exactly 200, you can see them and work with them. So I usually have something around 200, depending on the screen size. So I can just drag and drop those into my program. All right. Good. That's for the device view. Now let's go to the network view, Bob, and the topology view. All right. You see those two? They look very similar, right? They look very, very similar. We start with a device, uh, with a network view. In the network view, you can see what is connected to what. What is 
communicating to what? That's what I wanted to say. What is communicating? I can see right now HMI1 here is communicating with HMI PLC. PLC1 is not communicating with anyone, right? You see that? This is what we have the network view. This is who is communicating. Hey, here I see other two. Analog error PLC is communicating to HMI analog error, right? So here I can see who is communicating with which networking method. If I want to add another uh, communication, if two things should also communicate, I can just drag and drop here in the network view and now they are connected from the logic side. They are potentially communicating because they are now in one network, right? To check this, we have this button here on top, show address labels. If you click it, you can see a lot of addressing, a lot of stuff going on. And if I push the PLC here to the side and those two are communicating, I can see they are oh, this is somehow in the way, but that's fine. They are actually connected with this line. It's hard to see. PNIE2. So they are both connected with Profinet. And now we need to make sure that they are in the same network, meaning the first three numbers, that's the presetting for TIA portal, the first three numbers here, 192, 186, uh, 1680, have to be the same for the connected slot. So I can see for this slot, it's 192, 1680. For this, it's 192, 1680, 0, 3, uh, 0, and the last digit is 3. The last digit here is 1. The last digit indicates the 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 house number you could call it the the client number actually that's that's how you would call it um so the first part needs to be the same the last number needs to be different for those we we'll get we'll get to uh networking later on if i want to type in the one for the hmi here you will see the address is not unique within the subnet the next free address is the two so i could give this one actually the two and everything would be fine right Let's see, if I take another PLC, I have this PLC here on the side and I, I have 192.168.0.1. I can, if I want to give this PLC here, I can give 192.168.0.1, no problem at all because it is in a different network, right? They are not communicating. This one and this one, they are not communicating. If I want to make them communicate, I can just drag, drag and drop. And you see the assigned subnet on the second has been changed. How, how do you want? Do not change the addresses, right? But now we have a conflict again. If I select it, you see down here, it's red because we have a conflict. I would have to take the next free address. And now they can potentially communicate. So in the network view, it's really about who is talking to whom, right? <clears throat> now those three devices are in one network, which does not mean they are exchanging data, right? This has to do with the program then, of course, how they exactly exchange the data, um, but they potentially can. This PLC here and this one, no way, they're not connected. They're not connected here in a logical way, so they won't communicate. Of course, there's methods, but this is not how we do it here. <clears throat> so. If I want those to communicate, I can just drag and drop, right? And I have a pretty neat PLC. It has two different networks. So even if this is the 0, 03, uh, is the 192.168.0, I can just use the second slot and make it in a different network. And now this one can communicate with this one using this port and this port to the other. So <clears throat> also Profibus, if I want, they can also, uh, this one wants to communicate with Profibus with the others here. Here we go. Tap. Now they are in a Profibus network. So I can just, this is, now they are, can potentially communicate. I would of course need to write a program which data they are sending, but yeah, that's how it is. Um, the next thing I need to do actually here in the network view is when I click on connections, I will need to select who is communicating with whom right now, in what sense. So for example, if I have a, an HMI, it should communicate in an HMI connection with the PLC. Right? Those are just some pre-configured things. So I could also select S S7 communication, which is between two PLCs. You see the HMI cannot do that. So between the PLC time and PLC one, I want a communication, right? An S7 connection and I connect them. And now I can also see S7 connection one, they are communicating. 
you build networks like this, right? And then you have a lot of communication going on through the programs. That's, of course, a whole different topic, a whole, whole topic with a lot of contents. Um, but you can also, in this network view, you can check. You have network overview, and in network overview, you have all the components, right? That's very nice. But more important, you have connections. In connections, you can actually see who is communicating with whom, right? Who is communicating with whom? For example, uh, time is communicating with PLC1 using an S7 connection. HMI1 is communicating with HMI PLC using an HMI connection. And if I actually select it, I can also see the partners who are communicating with this method, which is important for the programming later on, right? of course. Good. <clears throat> There's more to it, but that's the rough overview. That's network view, right? I can see who is somehow communicating with whom using which networking method, right? So those, this one here, for example, is not communicating with anyone. This one also. Right? Those two are doing their own thing, so I can push them here somewhere. Uh, and those are somehow all interconnected. You see it. Somehow they are all communicating. The next we have is the topology view. That's the last. In the topology view, you see I have the same components. Ah, the problem right now is they have a different layout. If you click here on the button, apply positions from the network view, it's actually taking the network view here. Now I need to see 75% and 75%. You see they are now in the same position. Uh, just so it's easier to actually work with them because network view and topology view are connected. If you need communication, you only need the network view. There it goes. If you are not sure what you're doing, don't use the topology view at all. And now just quick explanation on it. In the topology view, you can see there's way less things that you can do here on top. You see it? Way less. Um, what we can do here is actually saying um, which terminal, which plug is connected where, which connector, right? Here you can see my HMI PLC has two Ethernet ports and one Profibus port. It has, uh, but it is a little bit different. This is just for communication. If it comes to physical connection, like where you hammer in that plug, the PLC actually has three Profinet, right? Whoops. Uh, three pro if you double click at any of those views, you get to the device view, just for, so you know. So it has three connections. Uh, and you see, I can select all three of those connections individually here. Here it just seems like it's two because two of them are internally connected, right? They are not different. They are just two connections where you can plug in, but they actually have the same features, same address, same everything but they are two different connect connectors. In the topology view, I can for diagnostics reasons and also for some maintenance and um, starting up reasons, like, like you download the program and then it automatically configures some components. Uh, here I can actually say who is connected at what exact connection. Right? This is now really saying which plug is plugged in where. Also looking at, if you want to, there's uh, yeah, gateways. No, not what I'm searching for. Network components. You have, for example, switches. Right? Switches. Oh, oh, so many switches. I'm just taking one. You have switches, network components, right? That are only for, uh, for connecting two different things. You see this one here? The switch only has one connection in the network view doesn't make any sense it makes sense because this connection it only is inside one network because it's a switch or a scalings it only is in one network in the topology view i can see ah it has four connections who is connected where maybe this one is connected here this one is connected there and this one is somehow connected there right that's what i have the topology view for now, if, for example, in the physical world, there is no connection here, like the wire is cut or it's plugged or something, this one will turn red. It will have an error LED indicating, hey, the plug has been plugged. And also the counter side, this one here will also have its diagnostics firing and saying, hey, there is an error here. Um, this won't happen. Like this error won't be there if you just have the network view and you pull the, you pull the plug. 
Um, then it would say, hey, connection lost, but it won't tell you on which, uh, on which connector and stuff like this. There's more to it. <clears throat> yeah. So the topology view is actually nice for setting up your network, right? And having a good network plan and for diagnostics most of the time. Yeah. The last thing here, in, the, in all three views, you can do show page breaks, right? Because this view is usually printed on paper, so you can use it for um, for 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 uh, diagnostics. You just print it out and you use it. And here you have the page break. I would make sure that it's all on one page, right? And now I could print. Uh, and there we go, right? Right click here somewhere. Right click, print, and then it would print this page view, right? This is then for all of the views. Right, depending on how you want to have them, you can zoom in, zoom out, and then you have different pages. Right. That makes sense for, for, for printing it out and really having it at the machines. Good. So that was a quick overview of device view, network view, and topology view. Um, I hope it will help you in the future. It's important information. If you're not sure uh, what you're doing, do not touch the topology view. I've seen many, many people making many, many errors with it. Uh, so stick with the network view for communication and the device view for configuring your and parameterizing your devices. Topology view, really, it's more for diagnostics reasons. If this video helped you, if you liked it, uh, leave a comment. If you still have questions, also leave a comment. If it helped you in any sense, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.